Today's video is all about biotin and should you be taking it? Are there any side effects? Spoiler alert, there is. Will it actually help you grow your hair? And what can you actually do instead? So a little bit of background about me. I am a very obsessive, geeky person. I look into things very deeply. I've been growing my hair and testing out multiple things over the past over 10 years now. I know what works, I know what doesn't. And I wanted to do a deep dive into this vitamin specifically because biotin is something that's promoted to people as the ultimate hair growth vitamin. And people aren't being given the context as to what this vitamin does, what happens when it's out of balance. This video is especially important for anybody who is acne prone, like I am. So let's just jump into it. So many years ago when I first started my hair journey, I was willing to try absolutely anything and one of those things was biotin. Without even looking into it, I went straight to the store, bought some and I was going to start taking it but something was telling me to research a bit about this before putting this stuff in my body. So biotin is actually another word for vitamin B7. This vitamin is obviously an essential vitamin that everybody should have in their diet and it contributes to a multitude of things, one of which is hair growth. Something that I think that a lot of people don't understand about vitamins is that sometimes you can have too much of one vitamin and it will actually deplete you in your levels of another. If you have too much of a high level of B7, it can actually deplete you in your levels of B5 and B5 pertains to the skin. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I need B7, but how much do I need of it? Well, this is where it gets tricky because currently as it stands, nobody actually knows what the recommended daily allowance is of B7. It says here that an RDA does not actually exist for biotin because there is not enough evidence to suggest a daily amount needed by most healthy people. Instead, there is a AI, <laughs> adequate intake level, which is assumed to ensure nutritional adequacy. If you're anything like me, you'll be thinking, what? What does that mean? <laughs> According to the Mayo Clinic, no side effects have been reported for biotin in amounts of up to 10 milligram per day. Even so, numerous websites claim that too much biotin can weaken the immune system, impact the neurological system, contribute to high blood glucose levels, and cause digestion problems or skin rashes. And then as usual, it says, if you're taking biotin as a supplement and notice any of these symptoms, contact a doctor to which they are so helpful nowadays. But anyway, as you can see, there's limited information about this. Science doesn't really see this as a priority and there's no explanation given as to why too much B7 can cause all of these things. But the explanation is that one of those things is that it's depleting you in B5. And while it does that also, another thing that I want everybody to bear in mind is that vitamins and nutrients are absorbed into the body and they're not meant to be absorbed in an isolated fashion. You'll often find that when you go and get a supplement, some brands will include plus vitamin C or plus this other vitamin. You'll think that it's not linked, but there's a lot of cases where you find that your body won't even absorb a certain nutrient if you haven't got another nutrient teamed up with it at the same time. And while all of this sounds incredibly complex and annoying that it is complex, all will become clear towards the end of the video because this just further proves that nature works in a divine order that is so difficult to replicate. So let's get back on track. Vitamin B7 depletes you of B5. What are the symptoms of B5 deficiency? It can manifest in a bunch of different ways. Some of them would be headaches, fatigue, nausea and vomiting, stomach cramps, irritability and restlessness, numbness or burning in the hands and feet, disturbed sleep, muscle cramps, depression, respiratory infections. When it comes to the skin, it says this. The exact relationship between vitamin B5 and acne is not yet fully understood. However, it is clear that vitamin B5 plays a role in sebum production and a vitamin B5 deficiency can lead to an overproduction of semen. 
overproduction of sebum, which can contribute to acne. So in a nutshell, if you want to have healthy skin and hair, you need to have a good balance of B7 and B5, and it shouldn't really be that complicated. So what do you do? Well, the concerning thing is that because there's no RDA for biotin, nobody knows how much you should be taking. And because there is no conclusive evidence to suggest any RDA, vitamin and supplement companies just have to play guesswork. As you can see, the levels vary from one brand to another. All of these different supplement brands have different milligrams listed on the label. And all of these supplement companies are simply going by whatever is under the limit of what is deemed to be dangerous. They're just keeping within a safe zone. But the fact of the matter is, is that everyone eats different. Everyone has a different diet. Some people might be depleted in B7, and some people might be consuming more of it than what they think. And my personal belief here is, and this is just my opinion, I feel like supplement companies often go overboard when it comes to your recommended daily allowance. Looking at all of this information, it can feel quite daunting because it makes you realize that trying to balance your nutrition through supplementation is actually far more complex than what people believe. And trying to maintain that balance can feel like you're walking on a tightrope. I decided not to take the biotin in the end because I have had acne problems before, all throughout my teens, and I was not willing to start messing things up in case I ended up taking too much B7 biotin. I'm not going to say on here that I'm completely against supplements and vitamins, but this is something that I'm looking into a lot recently. And more and more I come to the conclusion that the best thing that you can do, in my opinion, is to try and eat the most nutrient-dense diet that you possibly can. If you think about it, all of these foods that are grown from the ground or grown in nature, that are unmessed with, unadulterated, they already have the perfect combination of nutrients that the body recognises because it's in nature and the body knows how to digest it. But when you start adding synthetic things and mixing it all together, things can be thrown out of balance. And the more that people try and mess around with it by unnatural means, the more strange ailments and illnesses are just cropping up here, there and everywhere. I know it sounds a bit strange, but I spoke to a doctor the other day and she said, I've been a doctor for 40 years and you know what? Every day I see something new that I've never heard of before. And I found that actually quite concerning, for multiple reasons actually. <laughs> but we've become that used to things going wrong with our health that we forget that none of this stuff was supposed to occur in nature. It's all genetic fuckery. Anyway, bringing it back to the hair, if you want to increase your levels of B7 naturally, here are a list of foods that you can try that contain a good amount of B7. So nowadays my hair grows pretty quick because I have a very nutrient dense diet, but bearing in mind I'm pescatarian. Never in my life have I ever eaten beef or pork. In fact, I don't really have to consume much of any of these foods listed for me to notice a difference. In my previous video about hair growth, I did recommend that Brazil nuts and avocados in particular are a great, easy, quick thing to add into your diet that will boost your hair growth more than a biotin supplement, in my opinion. You've got to be careful nowadays. You can't promote too many, you know, natural foods or anything because that's dangerous nowadays. You can get in trouble because we live in clown world. But anyway, that was just a short video for anyone wondering about biotin. I felt like I really needed to share this information, especially if there's a lot of people coming to my channel looking to grow their hair. Which, by the way, if you haven't already seen it, I have a video all about all the things that helped me to grow my hair holistically. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video. Love you, bye! I, I, you know I'll be, 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 be.